forever and ever. The cross was also for righteousness. Jesus became Coming up on this generation, we travel down to Washington State with Northwest Indian News. Hello, I'm Shinoa Igawa. Welcome to Northwest Indian News. Thanks for joining us. NWIN is a news program that takes an in-depth look at issues and events important to Indian people throughout the Northwest. Today we're reporting to you from the Jamestown Sklalem Reservation near Squim, Washington, where the tribe has invited ambassadors from Norway and Namibia to their nation-to-nation -nation relationships gathering. The purpose of the gathering is to discuss areas of common interest among the nations, such as international trade and culture. Very proud, I mean, and very excited and proud. Um, we're, we're definitely honored to have such, such a um, distinguished guest here and uh, at such a high level um, from a foreign nation. Uh, obviously, the, the, all the tribes throughout the United States are all looking to enhance their economies and, and their business foundations so that they can generate uh, more revenues um, for their fundamental community services. That's an important issue for us. And uh, whether it's Norway, China, or any other nation, that, that we can engage in commerce and, and look for opportunities to develop uh, relations um, for various uh, business ventures, then uh, that's an exciting opportunity for us. Uh, so first things first, just so, so that we understand each other's relationship, what our political standing is, our legal standing is, understanding our culture and the unique needs of, of our communities and why there, there, there is a relationship between us and, and uh, other nations, much less the indigenous people of those other nations. That all helps in, in improving those relationships and subsequently we hope that we'll end up being a, a good business venture uh, as well as these political and cultural um, objectives. Eleven other Northwest tribes are here as well to share in the exchange of ideas. In this edition of Northwest Indian News, the Lower Elwha Clallam tribe continues the struggle to protect their ancestors' village of Chuitsen in Port Angeles, Washington. The state wanted to build replacement pontoons for the Hood Canal Bridge there, but instead found graves of the Clallams 
who called Chuitz in their home for more than 17 centuries. We will see how the diversification of tribal businesses is helping to improve health care, education, and quality of life for tribal members. And we will share in the 150th anniversary of the signing of the Point Elliott Treaty. The word Sklalem or Klalem in Coast Salish language means the strong people. The Lower Elwha Klalem tribe, relatives of the Jamestown Sklalem tribe, has been tested as heavy construction continued in their ancestors' village of Tuitzen at great cost to the people. NWIN reporter Nikki Cleary has more in this report. Until just 90 years ago, Klalem families occupied this land. Here, they processed fish, built tools, raised their children, and buried their dead. Since the beginning, when they built Port Angeles, they've known that we've had a cemetery down here. It is here in Port Angeles that the Washington Department of Transportation planned to build pontoons for the Hood Canal Bridge. You know, you come to work and it's never a good morning. You're taking out your ancestors to build a bridge. Since construction began in 2003, six longhouses, 10,000 artifacts, and more than 300 bodies have been uncovered. The village of Chafuitsin is the largest pre-European contact village site in the state. It is at least 2,700 years old. It looks to be a small dog cranium. On December 10, 2004, the tribe asked that construction be moved from the location. I think the question we should ask is, what can we do better in other circumstances to avoid something like this happening again? A healing for the generations that come up behind us. Chapuitsin is sacred to the Lower Elwha people. These are the things that we want to take in prayer. The village and cemetery are still remembered by today's tribal families. The main part of Chapuitsin is where Port Angeles is sitting on Hollywood Beach and all through Port Angeles. And as they were getting pushed, the further they were, had to go west because they were getting pushed out. As you go west, there was houses all along the edge. There was homes all along there. There was Indian homes. People were getting pushed out of the main streets and Hollywood Beach and so forth. But there was a few people living in Hollywood Beach, wasn't there? There was a few there then. But we weren't allowed to, you know, mix mix around. In other words, Port Angeles was kind of dangerous to children after, especially after that incident. Where the child was beaten to death for the two by four. We asked what happened to him and nobody told us. Several years later, they were saying that you can't say anything because if you did say something, life would be more miserable for them. The, the magnitude of the site is larger uh, than what was initially anticipated. Okay, so here we're looking at a map of a big house. We have staining of wood from the wooden planks. That looks to be when it was burned or whatever, it had fallen, and that's why they're kind of off-centered here. They said that Governor Stevens outlawed longhouses. Potlatch. Potlatch is because uh, the Indians gave away everything that they had in the house and they became destitute. But it was because our ancestors stored their gifts into the house so nothing would happen to it. And so this one man defied the law and he had a potlatch. And uh, immediately after he was through, he was put to jail in Olympia. After he came home, he moved his family to Port Gamble. So here we had two, three burials. We had another couple more here, and then we had that one burial that Vicky was talking about earlier. His head was exactly right here. And all this time that the elders always told us that the, the cemetery was there. They all, I always had the understanding when they talk about the cemetery that it was a, the largest cemetery, bigger than the one that's across the river and the one behind here by the ocean. 
The Indians always had this uh, idea from the way my grandfather talked that if, you know, you're married, your children grow up, they get married, they often moved to a place there and started another little settlement of their That's own. That's why the villages grew. That's why, why villages grew. It was a case like that that I understand that the person that had lived at Hollywood Beach and he never heard from his son and his family for I don't know how many days or weeks and that was during the smallpox era and he went up there to visit them and he found all seven of them dead. I heard my older sister talk about that. She was told that they just wrapped them up in blankets and put them away because my father couldn't keep up making boxes for people that were, you know, dying from the smallpox. My first thought was, for goodness sakes, I said, that's a cemetery. That's not just, a, you're not going to find a few bones. You're going, you're, you're digging up a cemetery. And the late Sam Almer told us that we were going to be the ones to have to hand it down. But he used to tell us, you have to remember, you have to remember. I think there was four total mills at one point that was on this 22.5 acre. I believe there was a kiln pretty much right in the center of this. There was a huge kiln. So we did find some human bone that where it was burnt on top. When the mills came in, his son went to work and he came home and told his dad what was happening to the bodies. They were just digging up and throwing them over those pipes and stuff that they were putting in for the mill. He said they didn't care. You know, that's what hurt, you know, my people before me. And then that, to have this happen again, that's another deep hurt because we know how hurt Sam Almer and the other people were. Why, why do they have to do it again? Enough is enough. When are they going to learn? When are they going to listen? We have words of wisdom that was um, given to us today that the project itself is going to be shut down. We're being witness today. We have the eagles that are flying around us all morning. In the frozen rain, 300 natives and non-natives stood for three hours to participate in a spiritual ceremony for the healing of Chukwitsan village. Here are the sights and sounds of that day. For Northwest Indian News, I'm Nikki Cleary, reporting. Today, you have embraced your ancestors. If you hear a whisper in this circle, you will know that the ancestors are talking to you. That the great feelings that they have and the legacy that they have left behind for each and every one of you is the history of the Lower Owl Town. So today, you have asserted the destiny of your children. From this day forward, they will begin to understand and be strengthened by the legacy that was left behind for them. The history that is a part of you today. Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. Six months ago, Claire made a promise to her family and to herself. The promise was she'd quit smoking by the time her next birthday came around. 
And already, she's feeling better. She has more stamina, more energy, and her lungs are stronger than ever before. In the 1890s, pioneers carved a railway through the rugged mountains between Skagway and the Klondike. More than a century later, the White Pass and Yukon route still makes this legendary run. Along the way, life has gotten better for folks working on the railroad, thanks in part to Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska, a health plan that's offered smart choices and quality coverage to the people of Alaska since before it was a state. Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We're here. We're with you. As U.S. federal grant money, housing programs, and anti-poverty efforts are being proposed for elimination in 2005, tribes are moving quickly to expand their businesses to fill the shortfalls in funding. Education, health care, and quality of life are improving for many tribal members, despite the proposed cuts, as tribes strive for self-determination. NWIN's Morgan Howard has the story. Casinos have proven to be more than just lucky for Northwest tribes. For some, they have provided substantial revenue. But Native Americans in Washington state aren't willing to gamble on their futures. As federal funding is shrinking for health care, education, and anti-poverty programs, tribes across the region are taking matters into their own hands by expanding their economic base. For the long term, I think, uh, and, and you see some of the tribal nations doing this, they're making plans for the, for the day after gaming. And, and uh, we, can, we can look at things such as the IMAN initiative and say, well, you know, that day might come very soon uh, via uh, uh, changing political uh, landscapes. Or we can say to ourselves, uh, no, we're going to do that on our own terms. While existing tribal businesses, including casinos, bring in much needed revenue for health and social services, Tribes can also use funds to diversify business holdings, branching out into other ventures such as commercial property leasing and construction and retailing, all to ensure the continuation of educational programs, housing, health care, and quality of life. Right now, this, this is going to be our prefab manufacturing plant where we're going to build uh, panels. Right now, we have a contract for a hotel that's being built in Ocean Shores. Diversification is already working for the Nooksack tribe. Their new health care center will be dedicated soon. The facility and increased staff was made possible by the tribe's construction company, casino, convenience store, and other enterprises. We're teaching young kids how to be carpenters, plumbers, electricians, uh, concrete layers. And uh, a lot of it is grant money, and some of it's casino revenue. And combined, the money never leaves the community. You know, we're building our own houses, we're building our own buildings. We built this room here. The recently completed Nisqually Red Wind Casino near Olympia replaces a smaller casino at the same site. The casino is one of the largest employers in Thurston County. Revenues from this gaming establishment and other tribal businesses have made it possible for the Nisqualys to also build a new health clinic and increase their staffing as well. The major portion of our money is allocated for all programs. Uh, we're uh, allocated a percentage for long-term investment. Uh, you know, gaming's going to flatten out here in, in the future and we'll be competitive, but, you know, there's, we'll, we'll have money to, to continue expanding programs on the reservation and so we can supplement uh, any shortfalls which every tribe, you know, has and there's been cutbacks in just about every program across the board from the Bureau to uh, put that money into the programs and uh, keep them going. Education is a high priority for all tribes. The new Lummi Nation School opened in 2004 with a $21 million BIA grant providing most of the funding. But tribal leaders know this could all change. And I applaud those nations that are putting money away for their children. And I applaud those nations that are able to diversify away from gaming, where they're not stigmatized as a tribal, uh, our casino tribe. Uh, they're, they're, uh, no, they're a nation, and they're a nation where they just so happen to do gaming, but they do all these other things. 
Even though the Just Treat Us the Same gambling initiative, I-892, was successfully defeated, tribes in Washington state aren't waiting for another challenge to their gaming interest. The casino industry has certainly had a, a significant impact on uh, the welfare of, of uh, Indian nations throughout the nation um, over this last 10 and up to even 15 years. Uh, it's, it's been slow in, de in development, but um, it certainly is great gaining momentum in terms of its impact. It's doing a number of different things. Without a doubt, um, it has generated new revenues that, that has not been available to the tribes to enhance the, the, the uh, health care, education, housing needs, reacquiring of our homelands, taking care of our natural resources and, and other uh, matters that are important to our community, from the youth to the elders. And those programs have substantially uh, um, been uh, uh, positively impacted um, by the, these new revenues. It also clearly uh, it helps us diversify our economic base because uh, gaming isn't the only uh, game in town uh, with regard to um, economic development for the tribes. They need to diversify, uh, generate new kinds of business opportunities, generate new kinds of, of uh, employment opportunities because not all members want to work in casinos. There's other um, uh, professions and vocations they want to engage in. This allows us to uh, develop those kinds of businesses for each of our communities. Seattle Premium Outlets is scheduled to open this spring next to Tulalip Tribe's Posita Village Business Park, with as many as 120 designer and brand name stores. Chelsea Properties Group has signed a 30-year property lease and will attract about 6 million visitors annually, which will help the nearby Tulalip Casino and, in turn, the quality of life for tribal members. Other tribes are following suit. The Puyallup Tribe will operate the newest Emerald Queen Casino on tribal fee land which is expected to be approved as trust land early this spring. The tribe purchased the Executive Inn Best Western Hotel in Fife, Washington, moving the former riverboat facility there to make way for development of the first tribal deep water port in the United States. The Kalich tribe has partnered with East Coast tribal casino giant Mohegan Sun Enterprises. It's waiting for the federal government to decide if they can establish a reservation and build a casino near the center of Washington. The, the opportunities that this will present for our tribal members is enormous. Uh, I hope that we will see the day soon where all of our tribal members have adequate health care, uh, don't have to pay the thousands of dollars a month for, for prescription benefits like my father has to pay, uh, that they can go to college, that they can come home to Cowlitz country and learn and, and be taught to what it means to be a Cowlitz Indian. Tribes such as the Cowlitz are actively looking toward a future where they too can achieve a greater degree of self-determination, where tribal businesses, including casinos, can help provide for a better quality of life. For Northwest Indian News, I'm Morgan Howard. My name is Frank Howard Yachnu. I'm from Cape Cod, and this generation will be right back. It's tax season, and living in rural Alaska means that it could take weeks, even months, to get your tax returns in the mail. It's always two weeks, sometimes six to eight weeks if I remember correct. Let Liberty Tax take away the worry and the wait. Simply pick up the phone and call toll free 1-866-563-2700. You can file your taxes electronically from the comfort of your home. You can usually have your check on at Gold Street the very next day. I go through John Hostetter. I trust him. I think I've got more on my returns with him than I would by myself. Liberty Tax guarantees the largest refunds at a smaller price and can often put money in your pocket the very same day. Quick and easy for me. So don't wait around for your tax returns in the mail. Give Liberty Tax a call. Liberty Tax, specializing in rural Alaska. Fast, friendly, trustworthy. That's how I feel with them. John's good people. On your next visit to Anchorage, be sure to stay at the Creekwood Inn and RV Park. Now under new management, the Creekwood Inn offers 26 newly renovated rooms and a cabin that sleeps six. If you're in town for an event, the Creekwood Inn is the nearest hotel to the Sullivan Arena. The Creekwood Inn also has 68 RV spaces available year-round and offers winter RV storage with water, electric, sewer, and cable. The Creekwood Inn and RV Park is a proud sponsor of the Iditarod Fur Rendezvous and the Alaska Fighting Championships. So the next time you're in Anchorage, visit us at the Creekwood Inn and RV Park. The Jamestown Sklallam tribe is well known for their leadership in self-governance. 
In 1874, a band of Sklalems paid $500 in gold for the 210 acres of land to be closer to their ancestral home. They struggled for over 100 years to remain a distinct community and finally gained federal recognition as a tribe in 1981. But the Sklalems would not have been able to preserve their culture nearly as well without the foresight of their ancestors, who signed the Point No Point Treaty in 1855. It was 150 years ago when many of the treaties went into effect. The anniversary was recognized throughout the area, including at Muckleteo, Washington, where the Point Elliott Treaty was signed. Tulalip Elder Raymond Moses attended the special anniversary. We're here at Muckleteo. This is the spot where our relatives signed the Point Elliott Treaty exactly 150 years ago. Today, people from throughout the Pacific Northwest are here to remember the treaty signing. Tulalip canoes are bringing on tribal members to meet local leaders. Today, there is a good crowd, but in 1855, there were over 2,000 Indian people here. <laughs> and I'm back, just saying a great true prayer, the great spirit will be right with each and every one of us today, and we shall celebrate. On that day, a century and a half ago, Chief's Health of the Duwamish and Suquamish tribes was here. So was Suquamish Chief Pat Canem and many other chiefs. The importance of today is that we remember where we came from. And 150 years ago, our elders came together, our chiefs, and preserved what we have today, our hunting, our fishing, our, our sovereignty as Native American people, as the Stahobsh people. The people can look at this as a dark day that we lost all this land that we once had. I look at it that our elders were smart enough to preserve for us today what we have left today. They think we're honoring the Treaty of 1855. We are not honoring the Treaty of 1855. We are honoring the right to practice our language and our spirituality. It is a good day for all. I, I think the ability for the non-Indian community to, to share in, in the you know the excitement over you know what we're what we're doing here today. You know, understanding that uh, this wasn't you know just history. That this is still part of our culture today. I am Raymond Moses Tiatmas with Northwest Indian News. We leave you with some sounds and images of the Jamestown Sklalem Nation to Nation Relationships Conference as this wraps up another edition of Northwest Indian News. We welcome your comments, so please contact us at the following numbers or email us at info at nwin.tv. Thanks for watching. I'm Shinoa Igawa. Uh, as Norway's ambassador to the United States, I also represent the Norwegian Sami people. And the largest group of Samis in the world actually live in Norway, about 40,000 of them. And then we, you have groups in Sweden and, and Finland and uh, Russia. And that, they are our native Norwegians, so to say. And I think uh, they can relate to a lot of things and stories that uh, Elaine and others tell about the relationship both between the native population and the majority today and also about their forefathers and the problems and traumas that they went through. And I think we do have to work together.